Hi, thank you for joining me today. We've been reading through A Course of Miracles, the main text, and today we are reading chapter 19, The Attainment of Peace, section five, the first obstacle, the desire to get rid of it. The first obstacle, the desire to get rid of it, and get rid of it being peace. The first obstacle that peace must flow across is your desire to get rid of it, for it cannot extend unless you keep it. You are the center from which it radiates outward to call others in. You are its home, its tranquil dwelling place from which it gently reaches out, but never leaving you. If you would make it homeless, how can it abide within the Son of God? If it would spread across the whole creation, it must begin with you, and from you to reach everyone who calls, and bring him rest by joining you. Why would you want peace homeless? What do you think that it must dispose, dis or rather dispossess, to dwell with you? What seems to be the cost you are so unwilling to pay? The little barrier of sand still stands between you and your brother. Would you reinforce it now? You are not asked to let it go for yourself alone. Christ asks it of you for himself. He would bring peace to everyone, and how can he do this except through you? Would you let a little bank of sand, a wall of dust, a tiny seeming barrier stand between your brothers and salvation? And yet this little remnant of attack you cherish, still against each other, is the first obstacle the peace in you encounters in its going forth. This little wall of hatred would still oppose the will of God and keep it limited. The Holy Spirit's purpose rests in peace within you, yet you are still unwilling to let it join you wholly. You still oppose the will of God just by a little, and that little is a limit you would place upon the whole. God's will is one, not many. It has no opposition, for there is none beside it. What you would still contain behind your little barrier and keep separate from your brother seems mightier than the universe, for it would hold back the universe and its creator. This wall would hide the purpose of heaven and keep it from heaven. Would you trust salvation? Would you thrust salvation away from the giver of salvation? For such have you become. Peace could no more depart from you than from God. Fear not this little obstacle. It cannot contain the will of God. Peace will flow across it and join you without hindrance. Salvation cannot be withheld from you. It is your purpose. You cannot choose apart from this. You have no purpose apart from your brother, nor apart from the one, he, uh, you, the one you ask the Holy Spirit to share with you. The little wall will fall away so quietly beneath the wings of peace, for peace will send its messengers from you to all the world, and barriers will fall away before their coming as easily as those that you interpose will be surmounted. To overcome the world is no more difficult than to surmount your little wall, for in the miracle of your holy relationship, Without this barrier is every miracle contained. There is no order of difficulty in miracles, for they are all the same. Each is a gentle winning over from the appeal of guilt to the appeal of love. How can this fail to be accomplished wherever it is undertaken? Guilt can arise. Rather, guilt can rise no real barriers against it and all that seems to stand between you must fall away because of the appeal you answered. From you who answered, he who answered you would call. His home is in your holy relationship. 
do not attempt to stand between him and his holy purpose, for it is yours. But let him quietly extend the miracle of your relationship to everyone contained in it as it was given. There is a hush in heaven, a happy expectancy, a little pause of gladness in acknowledgement of the journey's end. For heaven knows you well as you know heaven. No illusions stand between you now. Look not upon the little wall of shadows. The sun has risen over it. How can a shadow keep you from the sun? No more can you be kept by shadows from the light in which illusions end. Every miracle is but the end of an illusion. Such was the journey, such is its ending. And in the goal of truth, which you accepted, must all illusions end. The little insane wish to get rid of him who you invited in and push him out must produce conflict. As you look upon the world, this little wish, uprooted and floating aimlessly, can land and settle briefly on anything, for it has no purpose now. Before the Holy Spirit entered to abide with you, it seemed to have a mighty purpose, the fixed and unchangeable dedication to sin and its results. Now it is aimless, wandering pointlessly, causing no more than tiny interruptions in love's appeal. This feather of a wish, this tiny illusion, this microscopic remnant of the belief in sin is all that remains of what once seemed to be the world. It is no longer an un unrelenting barrier to peace. Its pointlessness, wandering, makes it appear, results, makes its results appear to be more erratic and unpredictable than before. Yet what could be more unstable than a tightly organized delusional system? Its seeming stability is its pervasive weakness, which extends to everything. The variability the little remnant induces merely indicates its limited results. How mighty can a little feather be before the giant wings of truth? Can it oppose an eagle's flight or hinder the advance of summer? Can it interfere with the effects of summer's sun upon a garden covered by snow? See but how easily this little wisp is lifted up and carried away, never to return, and part with it in gladness, not regret. For it is nothing in itself, and stood for nothing when you had greater faith in its protection. Would you not rather greet the summer sun than fix your gaze upon a disappearing snowflake and shiver in, resemblance, in remembrance of winter's cold? And that concludes section five of chapter 19, The Attainment of Peace. I don't know that I have much to add to this. Um, what, I, what I can say is that uh, there's definitely a dynamic of peace that we as humans don't seem to be comfortable with. It's, it's an interesting phenomenon. If you ask people, what, if you could have any one thing, what would it be? Most people will answer that they would like peace on earth. That that, if there was one thing of all the things that one could ask for. That is quite often the most common answer. And if that's the case, why is it so difficult for us to achieve that peace? And so this chapter here, this section here of this uh, chapter should help sort some of that out for us. 
If you'd like additional support, you can feel free to reach out to me, 907-351-3003. You can text me um, is best. Uh, also, you can message me through Facebook or YouTube or SoundCloud or my websites, lindalamp.com or lindalamp.shop. And until the next reading or until tomorrow for a daily lesson, namaste and much love. <laughs>